Welcome to Windsor Teaches Latin Language. Today we're going to be discussing indirect questions, what sort of forms you can expect, and reach consensus on how to translate indirect questions, as well as some of these signposts that might draw your attention to the fact that it is an indirect question. So first of all, what is the difference between indirect and direct questions? So first of all, if you have a direct question, you might say something like, what are you doing? And the indirection Indirect question that you might go with that is the soldier asked what the asked the man what he was doing. Another direct question might be, "Who are you?" And the indirect question associated with that direct question might be, "The slave asked who he was." So a direct question is a question directly asked to the person to whom it is addressed. However, on the other side of that coin, an indirect question is a question not directly asked to the person it is addressed to. It is a reported question or is a question that refers to a direct question. So what might those same direct questions and indirect questions look like in Latin? So what are you doing would be quid facis, which we might change to Miles virum rogavit quid facerat. The soldier asked the man what he was doing. The other direct question, who are you, we might ask quis es? The indirect question that might go with that direct question might be, servus rogavit quis eset? The slave asked who he was. And so again, we're seeing that the questions on the left are directly asked to the person to whom they are addressed, whereas the indirect questions are referred or a reported question. So another key thing is that indirect questions are going to use subjunctive verbs. I have another video on subjunctive verbs, imperfect and pluperfect, but since you're here, let's go over them on this video. So if it's a pluperfect subjunctive, I'd use the, I've used the word amo, uh, first conjugation, meaning I love, for this example. So the stem for a pluperfect subjunctive might be amav with A-M-A-V. The middle part is going to be the tense marker, so isse is going to go in the middle there. So amavise, and then we're going to add our personal ending, which is going to be m, s, t, mus, tis, or unt. For the imperfect subjunctive, it's a little bit simpler than the pluperfect. So we're still going to have our stem from amo, except it's going to be the infinitive, amare. Then we're going to simply add on our personal ending, which are the same as with the pluperfect subjunctive, except there is no isse part in the middle, and the stem looks much more like an infinitive verb than anything else. So let's now get a little bit more context for what indirect, indirect questions are going to look like in Latin and the way in which we might translate them. So indirect questions will have two verbs. They will have a main verb, and they will have the subjunctive verb. The main verb very rarely is in the subjunctive mood. The main verb is affected by when the action is happening, but the subjunctive verb will be partially affected by the time period the question is about. So let's see what that means. Captivus dicere no lebat quid faceret, which means the prisoner did not want, or rather was not wanting, it doesn't make much sense here, to say what he was doing. So no lebat, the main verb of the sentence is imperfect, did not want, and faceret is imperfect subjunctive to say what he was doing. Let's also look at another example now. You know Jovem Rogawit Kurwaka Adeset, which means Juno asked Jupiter why a cow was present. So for this sentence, I'm thinking about the Jupiter Io story where Jupiter supposedly sees Io walking in the woods, rushes over to her, she tries to escape, and he catches her easily. So Another key thing is that Jupiter also cloaks the entire Earth in cloud, making it all the more obvious to Juno that he's having one of his many extramarital affairs. Also, it's worth saying at this point, this story brings up a lot of problematic content, especially to the modern observer, regarding themes like consent uh, and assault as well. So here we've got the main verb rogawit in the green, and the subjunctive verb adeset, which refers to the waka, the cow. So this is a reported question and not a direct question because the question is implied that Juno asked Jupiter why a cow was present. The direct question is implied, not said outright, and it is referred to. So we've now seen the format of an indirect question. You're going to have a main verb and you're also going to have a subjunctive verb. They are likely to be in the same tense, although one of them, of course, is going to be subjunctive. 
key common signposts for indirect questions uh, are going to be some common verbs that you might see in such a construction and also some key and important question words. Key things you need to look out for are, of course, the main verb being some sort of verb of asking or wondering or thinking, uh, question words as well. And those two combined with the fact that the second verb is a subjunctive is going to point you very firmly to the idea that it is an indirect question. What sort of common verbs might we be able to expect? And I've drawn these from the Educas uh, Latin GCSE vocab list. So you might get rogo, I ask, or oro, I beg, or wolo, I want. Uh, so these are quite common in indirect questions. And question words, of course, are quiz, meaning who, ubi, where, could, why, qua, where to, qua modo, how, quid, what, qualis, what kind of, quat, how many, unde, from where, quantus, how much, num, whether, and quando, when. The quando in particular, you're probably thinking, is very, very similar to modern European languages, for example, Italian and Spanish, and you'd be correct. Now, this seems like an awful lot of, of words on the right-hand side here, but actually, these can be quite easy to learn if you want to use flashcards or any other repetitive learning technique. Okay, so we've gone through the four. We know what to expect. We know what sort of common verbs and question words we might run into. Let's now practice. Now get some practice based on the information from today's video. So first of all, we're going to write down each sentence and we're going to underline one, the main verb, two, the subjunctive verb, and three, the question word, all of which are signposts pointing towards it being an indirect question. We're also going to go have a go at translating the sentence. And as a follow up, we're going to learn the common question words and common verbs that we may find in a typical indirect question. So the sentences are, You no conoscere volebat ubi maritus suos esset. Two, imperator gavet quot milites haberet. Three, dominus nescebat unde pecunia veniset. And four, servus scire volebat num curere de deberet. There are a couple of extensions you can have a go as well. You can create your own indirect questions. You might want to be thinking about popular indirect questions from pop culture. One that springs to mind is Scarlet Witch in Infinity War, when she nearly takes down Thanos one to one. Thanos says, uh, Scarlet Witch says, you took everything from me. And Thanos says, I don't know who you are. And I have the feeling that that's an indirect question. Um, what might be a good idea is if you come up with an English one first and then see if you can convert it into Latin. Also, in order to fully retain the information from this video, you might want to start again and create a mind map of this video's information. Thank you very much for watching and listening to my video.